أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا سرّات المستقيم سرّات الذين أن يمتعلهم قال المقدوب عليهم ولا الدالين آمين 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 لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم Allahumma barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala Sayyidina Ibrahim fila halamina ina kamidu al-Majid Amma ba'd ayu al-Muslimi wa al-Muslimat Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We thank Allah for this opportunity and we appreciate Allah for counting us among the people that are still alive today We say Alhamdulillah It is out of the mercy and rahmah of Allah that we have been able to witness the 17th of Ramadan We thank Allah Azza wa Jalla for giving us that opportunity to witness uh, today, inshallah. This is Al Ark Network live on ITV, inshallah. And today we are going to be starting our program with the Al Bayan segment. And today we are going to be having health talk as we have a doctor that is readily seated to take us on what we have for today. I am Abdulaziz Adekula Adela and Adekomi Omova. And immediately after the Al Bayan segment, we are going to be moving into another segment where our viewers will be able to win gifts. You call into the program and you'll be able to win uh, some gifts from us. And lastly, we are going to be having a widow segment with our brother, brother Hamza, uh, as usual. For now, let's quickly move and delve into the Albaya segment as we have our doctor, Dr. Das Ahmad Suleiman in the studio. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're welcome this year again. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank yeah, you for inviting me. Yeah. Welcome, inshallah. Today, our doctor is going to be discussing with us on uh, chronic kidney diseases. Chronic kidney diseases. So I want to advise and urge our viewers that if you're just sitting, it's better you call those people that are not close to the TV to come and learn this uh, afternoon. Get your bio, get your jota, put down some things as our doctor will be discussing on the disease and also be advising us on how to prevent and avoid those diseases. Doctor, I think in our con if you check our society now, you see that a lot of people are suffering from uh, kidney disease, both the young and the old. And I think uh, medically, probably, the cause of all those things, we are the ones that is causing those things, is possible. So I wanted to discuss with us on these chronic diseases, their causes, as well as their the ways of preventing them. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, viewers at home. Um, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to say a word or two on chronic kidney diseases. Uh, there is no doubt that globally we have an upsurge of the number of persons suffering from kidney disease, especially the chronic one. Now, before we delve into the topic proper, um, we'll briefly talk about the kidney. Now, what are the kidneys? The kidneys are very important organs in the body that are shaped like beans, and they are located in the posterior aspect, that is the back of the abdomen, under the ribs, they are well protected there because of their significance and importance. Now, the kidneys mainly function to filter waste products in the body. This is the main functions of the kidney. They have other functions, as we will see um, later, which include controlling uh, blood pressure and they also produce hormones these hormones help in the production of blood that's why as we shall see later on when persons have uh, 
kidney diseases, their blood becomes short. So they will be needing blood uh, transfusion from time to time. Also, they produce uh, important factors like calcium, which help in strong bones and strong teeth, as well as um, metabolism of um, phosphorus. Now, all the uh, metabolites, that's the waste products that are produced in the body, especially the ones that are water soluble, are gotten rid of by the kidneys. You can, um, the similitude is like when you have your car, your engine oil, after a while, it becomes uh, dirty and used. You want to um, dispose of it. You go to do servicing and and change the oil and bring in um, fresh oil. But in the case of the kidneys, they work 24-7. There is no rest for them. The kidneys can filter blood of up to 140 mils per day. 140 mils of blood per day. As it does that, it extracts um, waste products which are passed out in the urine because urine of about one to two liters can be produced a day and inside this urine are waste products that are excreted from um, the body. So in a nutshell, these are some of the functions of the kidney. There are others now like um, getting rid of uh, drugs that like for instance if we take drugs, the used drugs, when you, when you take the active parts and you benefit from it, the metabolites are filtered from your body through um, the kidneys. Now, globally, the, the number of persons suffering kidney disease is on the rise. And some of these causes may be due to uh, some of our behaviors. Now, about 10% of the world population currently suffering chronic kidney disease. Now, the world population is about um, 8 billion. So that will mean about 800 million persons globally are suffering from chronic kidney disease. Now, we can bring this um, number home. Even in Nigeria, uh, about 8 to 10 percent of Nigerian population suffers um, chronic kidney disease. So with a population of uh, 200 million Nigerians, that will translate to about 20 million persons suffering from uh, chronic kidney disease and from year to year the number is growing the number is growing so we quickly look at what are some of the common causes of uh, chronic kidney disease some are very preventable some you may not be able to do anything about you know, just uh, do your best and pray but for those that are preventable the onus is upon us to see how much we can do to prevent these things from happening. Now, uh, first on the list is hypertension. Now, in, in, in those days, or in the days of old, we do know that hypertension was something you commonly see in old persons. But this is not the case today, because you see young persons with hypertension, persons younger than 30 years of age, beginning to have um, high, high blood pressure. Now, second, another common cause of chronic kidney disease is diabetes mellitus, where persons are not able to handle uh, the sugar in their system. Uh, they pass a lot of urine, they have a lot of sugar in their blood because of problems with um, insulin. Now, we also have chronic infections, chronic um, kidney infections like pyelonephritis. So when it becomes chronic over a long time, it can damage the kidneys and the kidneys will not be able to perform uh, their functions. Then, still on the list is enlarged prostate as well as prostate cancer. Enlargement of prostate is something that is um, natural, it comes with um, aging. So this is something we see uh, in, in the elderly. So when there's enlargement of prostate, there's an obstruction of uh, urine passage and with the backlog, it will affect um, the, the kidneys. Then infections like um, HIV infection can also affect the kidneys because HIV is still very much with us because of our 
uh, behaviors. Some persons still are not disciplined enough. They do anything and everything, and they come down with um, HIV. Then another cause is sickle cell disease that causes sickle cell nephropathy. Now, some persons still don't believe in uh, premarital testing before they, they go ahead to marry. They believe in love at first sight, and um, they will do anything to, to go ahead with um, anybody they are in love with. So we will advocate that, yes, in as much as we are not discouraging you from loving, you should go ahead and test uh, your genotype and see what you are. If you are AS, for instance, you shouldn't go for an AS uh, partner. So that is a way to curtail that. Then a very common practice with our persons is the use of uh, painkillers. In fact, if you go to uh, drugstores, they'll call it selection. They will bring different painkillers, and persons consume these products every day. Especially persons that do uh, maybe tedious jobs. Every moment, every time they come home, they have those um, drugs, and they will take them every day. And over time, these drugs will damage the kidneys, and we have a lot of um, such patients. Then, the one that is very common now is the use of bleaching creams and soaps. In fact, the, the world over, Nigeria is the country that has the highest number of bleaching persons. And this is very uh, uh, worrisome because even to, today, men even compete with women in bleaching. Before now, we used to know of certain tribes and certain gender, like women, will bleach more. But now, uh, the men counterparts are giving them um, a run for their money. So the use of bleaching cream and bleaching soap, because these uh, products contain heavy uh, metals. So these metals are deposited in the kidneys as well as other organs of the body. And over time, we begin to see the effect. So even the ones that uh, they say is organic product, natural products, they all have their on towards effects. So, these are some of the common um, causes of um, chronic kidney disease. Now, for chronic kidney diseases, how will you suspect that you may be having uh, kidney disease? The bad thing with chronic kidney disease is it would not show initially. So unless you go and check, you may not know that you have chronic kidney disease until it gets advanced. When it gets to an advanced stage, that is when you begin to see that, yes, uh, something may have been going on. But commonly, the things you, 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 you will um, notice is maybe uh, your urine may begin to um, foam like soap, which shouldn't get some form of um, frothiness that is foamy when you pass urine. But when it becomes excessive, yes, that is, it's a sign that you are passing a, a lot of proteins in your urine and you must go for a check. Then um, you may also notice that the amount of urine you used to pass is now reducing because the kidney is the organ that uh, makes urine and forms urine and uh, excretes urine along with the um, waste product. So when the amount of urine you begin to pass is reducing. That is also another uh, uh, warning that something may be going on with your kidneys. Then you may notice that your body may be swollen, maybe starting with the feet, your face, and uh, sometimes the abdomen. So um, this is another um, pointer that something may be wrong. Then you get tired easily. Persons that have uh, kidney disease get tired um, easily. We did mention earlier on that the kidneys are responsible for producing blood. So when the blood gets short, uh, you get tired easily. Things you, you could normally do, maybe walking short distances, uh, do, uh, housework you, you could do before without getting tired. Um, you find them very um, tedious to do. That's because blood is life. Blood is like the fuel uh, that the human being uses. Just like uh, blood is to man, what fuel is to the car. So you get tired easily. And maybe you begin to notice that your blood pressure 
may begin to rise. So if you notice all these things, until you go for a check, you may not know that um, something is wrong. Even when your blood pressure is high, it may not give you any symptom. You may not feel anything until it becomes so high and um, the person may either have a heart attack or a stroke. And um, the next thing is um, you blame village people. But however, if you had um, acted on time, it would have been um, and, uh, picked up early and probably nipped in the bud. So these are some of the symptoms of um, uh, chronic kidney disease. Yes, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate our guest lecturer who has been discussing with us on chronic kidney disease and uh, some of the causes as well as the symptoms of uh, this chronic kidney disease. Now, sir, before we throw our line open for our viewers to call and ask questions, I think I have one or two from here. The first I want to ask is, you mentioned during the course of the lecture that the kidney also is the part of the body or organ of the body that produces blood. Now, sometimes you said there's possibility of overworking the kidney. And we are asked to, to always donate blood, blood donation. As we donate, are we not overworking our kidney? Because once we donate our kidney, we need to produce another one. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, it is advisable to donate blood um, regularly or intermittently. Now, when you donate blood, the kidney will produce fresh blood, which is um, very energizing. Now, if you don't donate blood, however, the, the, the blood cells have a lifespan of about um, 90 days after which they, they will um, be replaced by new ones. So it, when you donate blood, it is very good because one, you are saving humanity, you are saving mankind, and your, uh, your blood, the body will respond to producing um, uh, more blood cells. However, before you donate blood, the, the, the person will be checked to see if the person has adequate <laughs> blood to donate from. So if you, you cannot give what you don't have. So if you don't have enough, nobody will take from you. So they will check first and ensure that um, uh, what you have is more than enough for you. So what you donate um, will not in any way affect you. Okay, the line to call is now displayed on your screen. As you can see, we have 081-2464-3980. You can now call to contribute either by uh, adding to what our lecturer has said or you ask him questions, inshallah, the line is open. Sir, we have a caller on the line already. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, salam. Hello, sir. Hello, good evening. I mean, good afternoon, sorry. Yeah, good, good, good afternoon, sir. Please, your name and where you're calling from? My name is Abdul Rashid. I'm calling from Benin. Abdul Rashid calling from Benin. Please go ahead with your contribution. Yes, sir. I want to answer a question, sir. You want to answer a question? Yeah. Okay, sorry, we are not on the segment of answering questions yet. We are still on the segment where our lecturer is discussing with us on chronic kidney disease. So maybe you call back at that time when we'll be ask, answering, uh, asking questions. Okay, thank you very much. As I know, you have been able to tell us some of the causes of this kidney disease. So how can we now prevent them? Uh, prevention of... Sorry, please. I think we have another caller on the line. We've lost that call. Hello? We've lost the call. Yes. Uh, prevention of kidney diseases will... Hello? Hello? What are the preventive methods of, to avoid kidney? Your name, please. The preventive method to avoid kidney. Okay, your name, please. Your name. Okay, I'm Osaro. I'm calling from Epoma. Okay, Saro, calling from Epoma. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah. Doctor, we we'll answer the question immediately. Thank you very much. Okay, what are the I think uh, things that we can do in order to prevent some of these things? 
Yes. Um, common things we can do to prevent kidney diseases. One is to take adequate water. Now, you may want to ask me, what's the relationship between taking water and preventing kidney disease? Now, the kidney, uh, water to the kidney is what water is to the fish. Because the kidney enjoys a lot of water. Now, when you take a lot of water, you'll um, save yourself from things like kidney stone. That's why persons that live in uh, hot, um, arid regions like the desert, they are more at risk of uh, having kidney stone because one, the environment is so hot, they sweat a lot Hello? and they don't have... Um, Hello? Hello, good afternoon. Uh -huh. Good afternoon, Salam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salam Alaikum. Uh -huh. This is uh, Mustafa calling from Benin. Okay, sir. Mustafa calling from Benin. Uh, doctor, sir, you can go on with your question, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, I, I, I enjoyed the lecture delivered by uh, the doctor. The question I want to ask is that kidney uh, patients, most kidney disease patients don't always make it when they are taken to the hospital for treatment. Why is that so? Is it because we lack adequate personnel to handle kidney problems? Or is it the, is it the facilities that are not there? Why is it that any time anybody is discovered to have kidney, the kidney disease, it's like a death sentence? Why is that so? Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate your calling. Thank you for uh, the brilliant question. Uh, Okay, let's take this. Okay, I'll take that and I'll come to the prevention. Now, the, um, your, your, your concerns are not um, wrong. I think uh, now, the topic is a, a good one and the uh, callers are coming in from different angles. Hello, good afternoon. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Now, now, the question on why um, uh, sufferers of kidney disease don't seem to uh, do well to make it. This is not um, um, largely correct. The reason being that one, these persons they present late, as we we pointed out, and secondly, treating kidney disease is very expensive. From one dialysis to kidney transplant. Now, when we advocate kidney transplant, it's like replacing. Um, your knocked engine with a brand new one. So one, you need the funds. Then you need somebody to donate an organ for uh, the sufferer of kidney disease. So when the funds are available, the organ should also be available. We've seen cases of patients that have um, haven't done kidney transplant. They've lived more than 10 years and still counting, and they are strong. You, ha you hardly know that these persons are carrying a, an organ. So, so the reasons, uh, the reasons um, that can be adduced for this is one, the cost of, the, um, of treating kidney uh, disease and the availability of organs. In other climes, the government pays for treatment of kidney diseases. And even donors of organs, the government um, have a way of um, giving them incentives to say thank you for coming to the aid of this, your, your relative. Then they will pay for all the treatment, and subsequently the patient will be on some form of stipends every month to get his drugs. Of course, the drugs are free. So we, we pray someday we will um, but, sir, be... Does, does that mean the only solution to kidney disease is transplant? Yes, for chronic kidney disease, especially end stage um, type is transplant and uh, well, dialysis before then. But transplant is better than um, dialysis. Okay, I think uh, we can now go back. Okay, hello. Hello, good afternoon. Okay, I think we can now go to the... Yes, there was a question on prevention. I started with um, taking adequate water. And we said if you do that, uh, you save yourself the problems of having uh, kidney stones. Now, regular check will also um, uh, tell you if you have hypertension, 
is the uncontrolled hypertension that will um, cause uh, damage the kidney. So if, you, if a patient is diagnosed with hypertension, the patient should be on drug with regular monitoring and regular um, um, hello, checks. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Your name again? This Humphrey, Humphrey at my time from Benin. Humphrey from Benin, please go ahead with your question, please. Uh, you will do better coordination by, by addressing calls coming in at the situation. Where is the director of this program of crime at last? Somebody is asking questions about calls that are coming in. Who the most did your program with? I don't know this guy, I don't want to listen to that program from TV. Somebody, the doctor is doing justice to the question being asked. And calls are coming intermittently. This is something that nobody is hearing you anymore. Can you hear yourself? Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate your contribution. So um, we'll go back to um, addressing the, the preventive uh, measures. We've talked about water. We've talked about um, um, taking your antihypertensive drugs and ensuring that the blood, blood pressure is controlled. Then if you are diabetic too, it's the uncontrolled type that uh, uh, affects the kidney. Okay. So you take your drugs, either insulin or the tablet, and ensure that... Um, your blood pressure, your blood sugar is controlled. Then we talked about infection, things like HIV. This is somebody, something that every man has to, a woman has to take care of. We know the behavioral patterns that will lead to HIV. Now, globally, it is um, uh, sexual exposures that causes HIV globally. We know other types like um, blood uh, transfusing um, infected blood. Yes, can cause it and use of uh, contaminated shops. So HIV, whatever you do to pre protect yourself from HIV, yes. Then we talked about uh, painkillers like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. I won't mention any, any particular name, but that's the group of the drugs that will cause uh, uh, kidney disease. Then bleaching. We talked about bleaching. Irrespective of the way it comes, whether bleaching soap, bleaching capsule, or bleaching uh, creams, all end up in uh, the same thing of uh, affecting the kidney. So these are some of them. Then for persons that have enlarged prostate, it should be dealt with on time. Either you do the surgery or uh, whatever procedures that will uh, relieve you of that obstructive um, obstruction to urine flow. So these are some of the... Uh, preventive uh, measures. Then, of course, having done all this, you pray that God will keep Sorry, you healthy. I want to ask, what of af af aphrodisiac? Does it have anything to do with the people? Aphrodisiac? <laughs> well, if the heart is okay, no. But however, for persons that have um, <laughs> heart, heart <laughs> problems... Um, please, can you please turn down the volume of your TV set? Or you move away from your television? Please, anybody that uh, wants to call, if you want to call us, please you do us favor by moving away from your TV set or you tune down the volume of the TV set so that uh, all this noise we are getting will not uh, be coming up. Thank you very much. Please, you can now stand up. With yeah, the, the question on Af aphrodisia. Um, if normally anybody that has a heart condition is expected not to take aphrodisiac, uh, now, what's aphrodisiac? That's a big language. It means um, uh, products or drugs that will enhance uh, sexual performance. That's aphrodisiac. Now, because um, sexual activity takes a great toll on the heart, so uh, somebody that has um, heart problems should moderate sexual exposure. That's one, and the use of aphrodisiac. So. If the person doesn't have any of these, then it may not have any effect on, on the kidneys. But however, if it now affects the heart, then there's a relationship between the relationship between the heart and the kidney is like that of husband and wife. If the heart has a problem, it affects the kidney and vice versa. Okay. Osagwe, move away from your TV set. Okay. Okay, so what's the question you want to ask? How do we know that we have chronic kidney disease? Okay. Uh, Osagwe, for being to ask that uh, brilliant question with us. Tell me your full name first. Osagwe what? Onahise. Onahise. Osagwe Onahise. From where? 
We are in Benin. Uzama. Okay. Osago or he said, for being able to win this, go to number 67 Lagos Street and get a a a gift from them. There's going to be they are going to give you one small bag of rice. Courtesy and Act Network. So thank you very much for calling. I think uh, you have discussed what he asked, and uh, you can just probably just uh, give a word of advice to our viewers on. Uh, you have discussed about the preventive measures, and I think uh, you talk about drinking water. So, like, what quantity of water is one expected to take per day? Um, a minimum of two liters, but if you can go up to um, three liters, better. The more you drink, the better. Now, uh, bringing it home, um, a liter is about two sachets of pure water. So that means two liters will be uh, four, four sachets, and three liters will be six sachets of pure water. Now, if you have other, other um, measures at home that you can use to measure that, that's fine. Then the big Ragulis uh, bottle is 1.5 liters. So two of that will be um, three liters. So yes, you take enough. Because the more, what will make you know that you're not taking enough water is when your urine is yellowish or dark yellow, that will tell you that you're not taking enough. The more water you take, the lighter your urine is. It becomes very uh, like cream colored or very light yellow, amber color. That's the normal um, color of urine. So the more water you take, the lighter, the closer the color of your urine to the color of water. Water is colorless anyway. Okay, thank you very much. I think we've all listened to our lecturer. He has been able to tell us the causes, the preventive measure, as well as the symptoms of chronic kidney disease. Now, for people that take drugs without prescription, so what's your advice? Um, that is um, self-medication, uh, which has its um, bad uh, effects. Now, we talked about um, certain painkillers. Now, for these persons that take this drug, they see it as, oh, I'm just taking painkillers. So, but if you were to take drug on prescription, then the doctor will be able to tell you that, oh, this drug is not good for you because of one, two, three reasons. In fact, some persons have uh, found themselves having a peptic ulcer disease because of use of some of these uh, painkillers too. So uh, drugs should be on prescription and for um, a period of time. It's not something you take uh, chronically or because you see, you saw your brother taking a particular drug, uh, you think you can also uh, take that drug because uh, what works for A may not work for B. So that's my advice on the use of drugs. It should be on prescription. Okay, uh, our doctor also discussed with us about uh, cream, bleaching cream, which we all know is very common in our society. Now people want to move from being dark into being fair. People want to move from being fair into completely white. So what's your advice, sir? Um, people should um, be proud of the color of their skin. People should um, know that having a dark skin is protective, especially if you live in this in tropical region with a lot of uh, heat and sun. It, the melanin protects you from uh, um, the effect of excessive sun. That is why persons that are uh, devoid of this melanin, like uh, the African Oibos, the one we call albinos, or they, they are exposed to so much um, sun and they don't have the protection of melanin. They are at risk of skin cancers and other types of uh, cancers. So for you who have a black skin, that's a natural protection from uh, the effect of excess sun and skin cancer. So this person should, devoid, should, should avoid the use of uh, bleaching cream uh, to lighten their skin. Okay, thank you very much. Whether it is natural, organic, or whichever, whatever skin, a cream that you're going to use that will turn your skin from its natural state is not a good one for you. That's how much we can take on this segment of this program. On this program today, we want to sincerely appreciate our doctor for squeezing our title of no time to be here. 
We know you are always busy and you have decided to come and make this sacrifice. We appreciate you. And we sincerely believe and hope that next time that we invite you again, you are still going to appear on the program. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for yeah. having me. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. It's on that note that we want to call it a day for today. Until tomorrow again, that we'll be coming your way with our Quranic competition, inshallah. Same time, 12 p.m. tomorrow, Sunday. May Allah continue to be with us. We say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.